Hello, my friends. God bless you. On the last Monday of the year, and may it be glorious to all of you, as God has done to me, I want you to receive this Monday as a Monday which has been renewed for you. Very well, we are speaking about the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus and the end of the ages. The first big sign which Jesus mentioned was about deceit. He said, take heed, take heed, be attentive and be watchful that no one deceives you. No one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Then we spoke of the second sign. We spoke of the third sign yesterday. Now, the fourth sign. See that Jesus once again mentions deceit. He says, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. You have to observe in the biblical scriptures. There are emphasis that Jesus gives in certain aspects, points and themes. And in his discussion and teachings to his disciples, he strengthens the idea that in the last days, there will be many deceivers, many deceivers, false prophets. More specifically, false prophets, which will deceive many. He spoke of deceit in the first sign. Now on the fourth, he says, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Meaning Jesus affirms, he affirms, he guarantees that many will be deceived. Then I was thinking, how can deceit rise? How can the false prophets arise? The false prophets certainly learned how to be a prophet. Certainly. So he came amongst the other prophets, learned the techniques of the real and true prophets, and applied these techniques, which were deceitful, to the people who are those to those type of people who live a faith which is a fantasy an emotive and emotional faith filled with music and illusions and hymns but do not speak of the word of god you verify for example that the hymns the poems of David are prophetic. Psalms is prophetic. There many times, David spoke as if he was Christ himself, as if he was the Savior. Not he being the Savior, but him being the Redeemer, as if he were the Redeemer. For example, in Psalm 67, he says, my soul is exceedingly sad to death. He speaks in psalm as of his sadness. He spoke as if he was Jesus. David is a type of Jesus, which many times we find there in psalms. So the deceitful prophets, sorry, whenever I do something, someone calls and interrupts our discussion. So the deceitful prophets learn some things or everything from the Bible. Then they get pieces from the Bible 
which bring a discussion which pleases everyone. So these prophets, the deceitful prophets are like this. They want to please everyone, all kinds of people. The prophets, the deceitful prophet, he has no interest in speaking directly from the sacred scriptures. He simply speaks that which pleases everyone. Jesus said that in the last days, the days that would precede his death, there would be many false prophets which would deceive many. It's the fourth sign. Now, one more thing we need to observe is that the false prophets, they rise from the churches. For example, we've had various bishops, various pastors, various assistants, various auxiliaries who left from amongst us. And they spent many years with us. And they learned how to do things. But because of an inappropriate action or behavior, like adultery, prostitution, theft, lies, etc., a series of many things which is not even worth mentioning. But because of these sins, of course, immediately they were immediately removed from the altar to assume a secular position until they prove and show fruits of repentance. But they never did. Because you know these people, when they sin, they're so used to the word of God, they sin, they don't submit. They are incapable of repenting, incapable of being humble to repent. Then what do they do? They go out to church, they take half a dozen which they know very well, and they go with them to open their own church. Then the deceitful prophet is born preaching what he does not have, only speaking of that which they don't know. They knew before, they had before the Spirit of God, but now they put off the fire of the Holy Spirit because of the sin, but they don't accept to lose the position, the status. So they start to preach, start to make miracles, and the devil loves this, the devil helps these elements to promote the deceitful gospel. And then here, the false prophet, the deceiving prophet is born. And you have to know this. Pay attention because you have to know this. And I'm telling you this for your own good. For you to be attentive to whom you are following. Because I doubt, I doubt that a prophet of God will stop speaking the word of God in truth. I doubt that he will condemn when rather when he is a deceitful prophet he doesn't condemn sin he just bypasses it because when we speak of sin and sacrifice this shocks people people those people you know who are living a faith which is based on emotions we could say they are afflicted because they don't like this type of talk. So they look for a church where they don't speak of sacrifice, where they don't speak of sin, where they don't speak of forgiveness, where they don't teach the Word of God in full. Then they congregate in this place and they stay there, sowing clothes of holiness, but their lives don't move forward. Their lives is bound because the truth sets free. 
the truth sets free. If you hear half the truth, it's obvious that you hear half a lie. So you hear half a lie, half a truth, then you are pleased with this. Oh, it's not touching my womb, my wound. It's not touching my lover. It's not touching my irregular life which I live. So I'll stay here. So many false prophets will rise and deceive with half of the truth. And I would like to say to you, clearly, if for a reason you hear me preach and putting aside the truth and saying what only pleases you, then you can consider me as a deceitful prophet. In all these years preaching the gospel, look, it's about 50 years preaching the gospel, besides the time I was single as well. 57 years. So in all this time, I tended very much to what was what was written, observing the words, the punctuations, seeking fundaments to understand and know that which I didn't know, revelations which only God could reveal to me. So I'm very attentive to the Word of God. I don't come here with beautiful speeches to please everyone no. I speak a word which is very grotesque and I make sure I do this so that those who pretend the intruders, the hypocrites may disappear. I'm not doing this work here to win your appreciation. I'm not here to guarantee anything from you. On the contrary, we are here every single day working, fighting to sustain the faith of the sincere and see if those hypocrites will leave from a front of us that we may go through more quickly and not let those who are living a sincere faith be deceived with the false and old prophets. And I want to say to you, if you, my friend, put on my Instagram the address or link of any pastor, missionary, anyone who calls himself of God, I'm going to ban you. I will block you because I don't know who this person is. I don't know who he, who he is who's preaching. I don't know him. How can I let you use our Instagram to promote a person I don't know? So please, don't put it here because I will block you immediately. Be sure of this. And if you don't like it, then be patient. Then this is what I think and this is what I believe. Because I don't want anyone to use me to promote lies. So when Jesus said, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. This is the reality today. There are many churches, churches where pastors are demon-possessed. We placed here a testimony last week. It's on my Facebook. Jadson, Bishop Jadson there in Rio de Janeiro, interviewed a man who preached the gospel as if he was a man of God filled with the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people would even go to churches and he would do meetings, etc. But see how he would do the work filled with demons. A small and miserable and empty life because these are the false prophets. The false prophets are known and characterized by this. They have no family, no. They're not satisfied with their own wives, no. They change wives as they change clothes. This is the reality. 
So the false prophet, he does not have a strong marriage, a strong family. And this is the first characteristic of the false prophet. Don't forget this. He who is of God, how can I share to you a pure message, perfect message from the word of God? How could I be a messenger of God with my life being bound and destroyed, a life which is bound and stuck? There's no way. Every day I'm here, every day I'm speaking, you're hearing me. And you know whether I'm passing spirits or information. You know my family, you know me. You know my children. You know. You just don't know Moses, but you know Cristiano, Viviane. You know Julio. You know Bishop Renato. You know Esther. So we have family. Praise God. Doesn't mean that all those who have families are of God. No. You have to evaluate as well the factor of the message. If they pass spirit, if they transfer something positive to you, I have the certainty that in the work which I have done, we have transferred and passed life to people. I'm sure of this. Because when we are fountains, we are always springing. And if I preach more and do meetings, I will spring again. And if it's at night, I'll spring. In the morning, I'll spring. The whole day we speak of the things of God and we pass, not just speaking, but living that which we preach. So, the false prophet, he has no character, he's deceitful. He's a hypocrite. He manages to fill people with gluttony because there are people who are filled with evil spirits. The devil uses his children to grow. Then he pulls a carpet. But the fact is, in the last days, many prophets, false prophets, will rise and will deceive many. And they are already here. I don't advise you to enter the pages of any anyone just to hear messages. And obviously, people who keep seeking pages from other pastors, other denominations, etc., are people who are just believers. When we have the Holy Spirit, we're already satisfied. I don't live like a monkey going from branch to branch. Never, never. All my life as a Christian, I never did this. But there are people who live from branch to branch. They go here, they go there, they come back, they go there. They're seeking. Why? Because they're empty. They lack the Holy Spirit. And we're promoting the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And he who is baptized with the Holy Spirit is not deceived. Can never be deceived. Why? Because they have the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of discernment. And you can discern what is good and what is bad. And separate. So, my friend, the subject of deceit is very, very, but very vast. Which takes many people, unfortunately, to chaos, to the tomb. So we have many believers who have fallen because they listen to the false prophets. Those who came from amongst us and started to say this and that about me, saying that I have this and that, that I have the other thing over there. Many, but many things our lies, other things are half truths. But I have condition. I have condition. Here in Brazil, I have no salary. I gave up my salary. Do you know why? Because I have book rights. I have rights, copyrights. Do you know how many books that were sold around the world? Over a hundred million books. 
Besides the rights to movies and books, which we, from our stories, all of this gives us rights by obligation. It's their rights, as soccer players have their rights, as artists have their rights. Everyone who has their own personal production has ownerships. They have ownership. They have rights. So they have condition, and I have condition to acquire. And I don't keep acquiring. We invest in the work of God. So I don't have this hesitancy. We even declared it in the court, even in the U.S., there in the United States, here as well. When a person doesn't pay the tax, they go to prison. So, I'm an open person, and you know this. I am super open. So I have to walk according to the law, in the right path. If, for a reason, I slip up, they'll catch me. So, my friend, verify. I'm not here trying to prove that I'm a man of God. I don't need to prove this to anyone. My work on its own. Jesus said that the, tr the tree is known by its fruits. All tree, the whole tree is known by its fruits. Look at my tree and look at the tree of those who are false prophets. You're going to see who is false and who is true. And you'll be deceived or not depending on your head. If you use your emotional faith, your emotional faith, it's obvious that you will feel sorry for those who were excluded and chased out the altar because they fell in sin. Many people came to us saying, Come on, Bishop, you could have had mercy. Where is the love? Where is forgiveness? And I ask you, where's justice? Where's discipline? The kingdom of God is the kingdom of justice, order. That's why not many want to come in, because no one wants to submit to discipline and order and harmony, which is the kingdom of God. So the universal church, doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter the name, the figure, if he fell, if he slipped up and he will fall and he will re we will remove him because we don't want a liar to use the altar of the universal church to take the seats to people. It's for your sake that they are removed, that you may not be deceived. That's it. The fourth sign speaks of many false prophets which will deceive many. And Jesus said this in the first sign. Take heed. Take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed of the false prophets, the deceivers. And that's what you should do. I have to do it. All of us have to do it. It's homework. But for every single day, for us not to be taken by the faith of the heart. Faith doesn't come from the heart. Faith is intellect, it's spirit, reason. This is the faith that makes us maintain ourselves standing. God bless you until tomorrow in the name of Jesus.